Hello Internet. Today we have this rare EVGA GTX 8800, which is older than the poop of the dinosaurs. I don't remember what the issue was, so I'll start by taking it apart and see if I can find any fossils. 300,000 years old thermal pads that came from an era where lime color was cool. Uh, 70s, I think. Either way, once I finally crack this thing open, even more lime pads and some blue indicating that I can still recognize colors. By looking at the board, we can see that this model of historical engineering was far more advanced and better designed than any modern graphics cards we see today. The core is protected. Parts of the core that are now embedded into the die reside as a separate chip. Maybe a memory controller or a display controller, I don't know. And we have two six power connectors, which is as futuristic as it can get. Not knowing what to expect, I'll poke around the board with my multimeter, aimlessly looking for a short circuit anywhere, but I found no short. And once I power the card, it pulls over 2.5 amps, which is more than a 4090. This card must have some insane power. No wonder owner wanted it fixed. Either way, the only suspect I have now is this chip here. Its resistance is only 12.8 ohms, which doesn't tell me anything, but the voltage rail that powering this chip is only 0.3 volt, which is kind of strange if you ask me. With the new paste of light, let's boot this card and see what it does. The device manager isn't detecting it, and Linux is also unable to find it. Okay, it looks like we have a no detect, so let's check for everything that can contribute to this behavior, such as uh, the oscillator, which as you can see, does seem to work. The data lines at the front look good. On the back, data lines, clock, and PEX reset are all looking good, so maybe BIOS? So I removed what I thought was the BIOS chip, put it in this folder and try to read it. Then I flashed it with the firmware that I found online, solder it back on and try again. But there was no change. So next step to do is what I do the best, is to reboot the core and see if that helps. So let's reboot the core and see if that helps. Core is rebolt, and what's interesting now is that the coil on which we had 12.8 ohms before is now reading half an ohm. But for whatever reason, it's actually reading 1.2 volt, so I don't know what happened. Suspecting this chip being the problem, I went ahead and I took one from the donor board 
as well as the core, both of which were working and the cost of that donor board was less than this repair. Reballing these chips was interesting, and since I didn't have a stencil for any of them, I had to manually make one. Using this universal stencil, for example, uh, you can mask some of the areas with the tape, and then manually remove unwanted balls one by one. Resistance is now doubled, but are we going to get 1.2 volt? Yes. The rest of the voltages are also good, so let's boot the cord and see if that works. Nope, that didn't work. Still no device. Last thing on my mind is the core itself. And since I have a working cord that came with the donor board, let's take the working core and put it on this board and see if that helps. swap is done, resistances are good, voltages are normal, so let's boot it again and see what it does. Looks like Linux has detected the cord, but Windows doesn't see it. But it did work on another computer, so I don't know, maybe dirty pins or something? Who knows? Now let's put it together along with a new set of pads, and with that done, we got a fix. Thank you for watching, hopefully this was entertaining enough to earn your subscription, goodbye.